start our meeting warm greetings to everybody in the precious name of our lord jesus christ let us thank god and praise god for this opportunity that we have this morning to be in his presence and to learn from his precious word i am richard anthony from trivandrum in kerala and on behalf of trc i welcome all our brothers and sisters who have joined us over this virtual meeting platform today as we read in second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for juristic for for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work i thank the lord for everyone who has joined us from various parts of the world including india uh, us uh, from the middle east uh, australia south africa this morning time to spend uh, to learn from the word of god we are also pleased to have our brother thomas jacob the servant of the lord from kerala a teaching faculty as he will continue his teaching on christology which helps us understand the lord jesus christ humanity and divinity and the relation between these two aspects let us commit our dear brother thomas in the hands of the lord as he continues to teach us this subject and also to us as lit- listeners that we may be able to understand the word of god that is rightly divided to us for our growth and for our education also i would like to just call out that as we conclude today if brother vivek chopra from sharan gospel uh, thane will will help us close in prayer over to you brother thomas and we eagerly wait to hear from you in continuation to our last uh, class on on christology over to you brother thomas but i yes. close can start with a prayer let us pray a lord and heavenly jesus christ we thank you for this morning time that thou has given to us thank you for all thy grace and blessings thank you for keeping us safe thank you for providing for us thank you for the wonderful title that we have to be called children of god lord we remember that it was through the cross of calvary that we are saved thy word helped us come out from our condition that we were lost in this world thy blood washed us clean so that we are holy to come into your presence we thank you and praise you for thy wonderful sacrifice on the cross of calvary lord this morning time as from various parts of the world our brothers and sisters have joined in eager to learn from your word not only learn from your word apply the teachings in our lives and to emulate you lord as the commandment is as we complete our journey on this earth lord we know that your coming is near and the time is short help us that we may be able to learn help us that we may be able to testify help us that we may be able to show to the people around us the true love of christ in our lives as well as the true and saving path to salvation and the only path to salvation for the lost souls around us we continue to uphold our brother thomas into your throne of grace lord help him that he may be able to rightly divide the word of god help him that we may be able to understand and help us as listeners that we may be able to uh, give us wisdom to understand uh, and 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 help us learn the the teachings that are taught to us lord this morning time we submit ourselves to your presence help us that we may be able to be humble help us that we may be able to understand help us that we may be able to apply thy teachings in our lives we continue to uphold ourselves as we spend time in your feet help us that we may be able to uh, emulate you in all our lives we ask everything today this morning as we submit ourselves in and through the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ thank Amen. you amen over to you brother thomas in the name of the lord be glorified once again the lord has brought us 
uh, together so that we may spend a little time in the presence of God. We were meditating upon the topic of Christology and as the Lord leads us, we would be continuing that study today also. <clears throat> may God enable us as we sit in his presence to understand uh, the wonder of the Lord Jesus Christ, the person and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we would be able to worship and adore him and live for him in the days to come. As I have mentioned uh, in the last session, uh, we are uh, learning from the DIT of the Lord Jesus Christ. We looked to the topic, the pre-existence of the Lord Jesus Christ last week. And today, the will of God, we will be looking to uh, the various divine names given to our Lord. The divine names given to Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we, uh, we have uh, various names given in the word of God. Uh, names and titles ascribed to the Lord Jesus Christ. And these names uh, clearly reveal before us who the Lord Jesus Christ is. For us, the names mean uh, nothing. But when we look to the Hebrew culture, especially during the biblical times, the Hebrew names were very meaningful names. And often those names are, are related to the character of the people who held that name. We know the story of Jacob. Jacob was a supplanter. His name means that, and that was his character. And so we can see many people who had their names as a reflection of their character. When we come to the Lord Jesus Christ also, the names given to him is a reflection of what he is. It is an expression of what our Lord is essentially. So when we look to the Bible and we trace the various names of our Lord Jesus Christ given both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we can understand <coughs> that all these names bring before us the various glories of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we are basically thinking upon the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let us look to some of the divine names and titles given to the Lord. First of all, I would like to bring your attention uh, to the fact that Jesus Christ is called God uh, in various portions of the scripture. He is called God. So let us look to some of the references and gather from there how the Holy Spirit has brought before us this beautiful title. First of all, I would like to draw your attention to Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 8, where we uh, read like this. But unto the Son he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. So here we, we read God the Father is speaking to God the Son. From the previous verses, we can understand that the Son of God or the Lord Jesus Christ is addressed by God the Father through various scripture portions and various Old Testament quotations we can see over here. And the verse which we have just read is taken from Psalm 45. We know that, that being a messianic Psalm, and it clearly brings before us the glory of Christ as the King and also as God. We read here like this, that unto the Son he saith, who says? God says, God the Father is speaking. As the God the Father is speaking to the Son, he is addressing him as, O God, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. What a beautiful way to understand 
I think that this is uh, this is this verse is sufficient in itself for us to conclude that Jesus Christ is called God uh, in the Scripture because this is not said by anyone uh, or anyone <coughs> any any <coughs> human beings any persons but it is said by God the Father Himself. He is looking to the Son and He is saying that O oh God, Thy throne is forever and ever. Another verse that comes to our mind is John chapter 1 and verse 1. We, uh, we know that verse by heart. There we read like this. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. John chapter 1 and verse 1. Now, uh, I would like to say one thing. That as we are discussing various verses. Some of these verses would have been already discussed in the last session as we were looking to the, uh, the pre-existence of our Lord. But today we are looking to those yeah. verses because of the names given to the Lord in those verses. Okay, now here in John 1, 1, we can see that how our Lord Jesus Christ is addressed by the Spirit of God, that he is the Word, <coughs> word of God and he is God himself. And we discussed this verse last time, so I don't want to spend more time on this verse. And uh, uh, we can understand that here very clearly it is written again by the Spirit of God that Jesus Christ is God. So uh, uh, when we come to the last, uh, uh, ch uh, the, la the penultimate chapter of the same gospel, that is John chapter 20 and verse 28, there we have the confession of um, uh, Thomas, the apostle, and as he met the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, eight days after his resurrection, uh, he had some doubts in his heart, and the Lord wanted to clear his doubts, and as the Lord was there clearing his doubts, uh, he, in response to the words of the Lord, he said like this, my Lord and my God, with a heart full of worship, he is looking to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is calling him, Thou art my Lord, and Thou art my God. The, 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 let me tell you one thing. Uh, recently, I had the opportunity to de deal or discuss uh, with a person uh, who did not his uh, real identity, but I think that he would be a Jehovah Witness. And he mentioned like this, that Jesus Christ never called <coughs> himself as God. Uh, so here we can see that when Apostle Thomas, he was uh, addressing Jesus Christ as his Lord and God. Our Lord did not deny what uh, Thomas said. The confession of Thomas was accepted by the Lord Jesus Christ. That means that it is as good as Christ saying by himself that he is the Lord and he is the God. So uh, that is a wonderful uh, statement by Apostle Thomas, just in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as he is calling him as God, our Lord is accepting that uh, confession and that title given to him. Then we uh, come to various other scripture portions. Uh, uh, let me uh, turn your attention to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 20. Uh, that is a very big verse. I, I am not going to read the whole verse, but uh, we all know that. First uh, John chapter 5 and verse 20. And, and the, <coughs> when we come to the last part of that verse, it is written, this is the true God and eternal life. Uh, we, uh, we are familiar with this verse. There we read that uh, uh, this verse is about the Lord Jesus Christ. It is about the Son of God. The one who came from heaven, the one who lived among the people, the one who died on the cross of Calvary. And looking to this Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Holy Spirit is encouraging Apostle John to write that this is the true God and eternal life. There are people who misquote this verse or misprint this verse like this. The God the Father is the true God and eternal life. But here the Spirit of God wants us to understand that it is a clear statement that the Lord Jesus Christ is called here as the true God. And 
uh, as a matter of fact, when we look to the writings of Apostle John, both in the Gospels, in the Epistles, and also in the book of Revelation, we have often noted that he, <laughs> he is using that adjective true to the Lord Jesus Christ. He calls him as the true light. He calls him as the true bread. He calls him as the true wine. And here as the true God. And in the book of Revelation as the true witness. So all these writings of Apostle John, we can see that that word true is given as an adjective to the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is a right thing for us to conclude that the statement, this is the true God and eternal life is uh, is really referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the true God. Uh, God the Father is calling him. The Spirit is calling him. The disciples are calling him. And there are various <laughs> other statements in the scripture looking, uh, uh, telling about the Lord Jesus Christ as he is God. Another verse that comes to our mind is Titus chapter 2 and verse 13. There it is written that, concerning Lord Jesus Christ, that he is the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus chapter 2 and verse 13. He is the great God. Then uh, when we come to the book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 5, uh, we read like this. He is the God blessed forever. Their apostle Paul is bringing before us the great privileges of the Israel nation. And as he is looking to those people as the, uh, as the people of God and various privileges are enumerated over there, we can see that Apostle Paul is bringing before us great truth that Jesus Christ, he is the God blessed forever. He is the God who is worthy of worship forever and ever. Then another verse which we have seen last time itself, that is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 6, there we can see various names of our Lord Jesus Christ. And one of those names is that he is the mighty God. So here we have various references in the word of God, which clearly says or directly calls Jesus Christ as God. We are familiar with these verses, but uh, uh, as we are meditating upon this great truth, it is right for us to call to our memory all these verses. <clears throat> now, as we say, or as we look to these verses, there are, <coughs> there are people who are not willing to accept this truth amongst us. Amongst us means not among the believers, but among uh, the people or amongst the, uh, amongst the various uh, cults and others. So uh, uh, there are people who brings arguments like this, See, in the Bible, our Lord himself has said that people are called gods. Uh, so let us look to one verse in the uh, Gospel of John, chapter 10 and verses 34 and 35. Our Lord himself is uh, quoting an Old Testament verse. Uh, John chapter 10, verses 34 and 35. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. So here we read about uh, some people of whom <coughs> it is said that they are gods. Now we know the, the background of this verse. It is a verse taken uh, from Sam where we read that our God, uh, he is calling them uh, as uh, uh, gods. They are the judges. So the uh, people would say that since these judges were called gods, so there is no point if you say that Jesus Christ is God. He is called as God in the scripture. But let me uh, tell you that when we read about these people as gods, that is not in an absolute sense. It is said in a different sense. We know that God is the judge of all the earth. Now, as these people are standing there as judges in the place of God, they are going to judge the people. And they have to, uh, they have to reflect 
that moral nature of our lord of our god his justice and his righteousness and in that sense in that moral sense in that relative sense they are called gods not in an absolute sense but when that reference is made <coughs> made to the lord jesus christ that reference god is made in an absolute sense and therefore he cannot be compared with other people then some people uh, makes another argument that is from the book of exodus chapter 4 and verse 16 in fact uh, while i was a school student uh, i uh, i uh, heard this argument from uh, one of my teachers uh, who uh, brought this argument before me to say that jesus christ is uh, not god that we read in the book of exodus chapter 4 and verse 16 there in relation between uh, uh, moses and aaron we read like this and he shall be thy spokesman unto the people and he shall be even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth and thou shall be to him instead of god exodus chapter 4 and verse 16 there our god is speaking to moses and in concerning aaron he is saying like this that aaron will be your spokesman he will be as your mouth and you would be as his god or as we read in kjv you will be instead of god for him in nkjv and other versions we read that you will be as god to him so uh, there moses is pictured as a god to aaron and the people say that jesus christ is called god in this sense means he is a god as moses was a god to aaron but when we come to the scripture we can see that see god the father himself is calling him god as we just uh, read from Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 8 God the father is calling him and if God the father is addressing him as god then what is the meaning of that address that means he is the absolute god he is the god who is as equal to god the father he is not god in a relative sense as moses is god to aaron then some people say like this that christ is a god but not as equal to god the father he is a god but not as equal to god the father but when we come to titus chapter 2 and verse 13 we can understand that he is called as the as the great god and our savior jesus christ He is the great God. He is not inferior to God the Father. What a blessed truth it is to know that the Bible clearly brings before us that Jesus Christ is God. We have lot of verses before us, and we have looked to some of the very important <laughs> verses which brings before us this truth without any doubt. May God help us. not only to understand this truth but also to defend this truth as we would be meeting people who are not willing to accept this truth uh, and uh, they would be challenging this truth in our lives the other name the second name which i would like to bring to your notice is that jesus christ is called the jehovah in the old testament when we look to the old testament scriptures we can uh, see that word jehova mentioned a lot of times and when we compare many old testament scripture quoted in the new testament we can understand that the the christ in the new testament is same as the christ, as the jehova in the old testament <coughs> now we all know that in kjv that word jehova is not used mostly it is the capital uh, letters lord l o r d all the letters in capital letters uh, that is uh, what we read in 
uh, in KJV mostly. And uh, when we look to other versions like uh, Jay and Darby version and all, it is very clear that he uh, puts that word Jehovah himself itself in those places so that we uh, have no chance of getting confused. But we have to notice one thing over here. All the three persons of the Godhead are addressed as Jehovah in the Old Testament. All the three persons in the Godhead are addressed as Jehovah in the Old Testament. They are addressed in that way jointly and separately also. But when we compare the scripture quotations in the New Testament with the Old Testament, we can understand that Christ is clearly called as <laughs> Jehovah in the Old Testament. In order to understand or in order to be clear that uh, all the three persons are called by the word Jehovah, by the name Jehovah, let me uh, again bring before you one verse uh, which is very familiar unto us. That is Psalm 110 and verse 1. It begins like this. And Jehovah said unto my Lord. Or we can read like this. Jehovah said unto Adonai. That two words are used there. Uh, when we uh, look to that verse, we have the word Jehovah there. And Adonai or my Lord it is also mentioned there. So Jehovah is addressed, as, uh, uh, is, uh, that word Jehovah is used to address God the Father over there. And when we uh, come to Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2, and there are many other verses where we can read that Holy Spirit is called as the Spirit of Jehovah. Holy Spirit is called as the spirit of Jehovah. That means he is Jehovah. So father is called as Jehovah. And the Holy Spirit is called as the spirit of Jehovah. And we can also understand from various scriptures. That Jesus Christ is also called as Jehovah. And as our focus is on that subject. Let us look to a couple of verses from Old Testament. To understand this truth. We know that the <coughs> word Jehovah occurs numerous times in uh, the Old Testament. And in one of that occurrence, which uh, comes in the book of Exodus chapter 3, uh, where our Lord was um, revealing himself uh, to Moses in that burning bush, we can see that Moses was in that wilderness and he was... Uh, shepherding his father-in-law's sheep. And he saw a special vision or a special sight. And what was that sight? There was a bush burning, but the bush is not consumed. So this sight uh, made Moses to come close and look to this sight. What is this? So as Moses came, we know the story, Lord spoke from that burning bush. He told Moses very clearly that he is standing on a holy ground. And Moses was filled with the awe of the presence of God over there. He removed his shoes <laughs> and he was standing there with the fear and with all the awe and worship. As he stands over there, God is speaking to him. And God is commissioning him to go back to Egypt and to get his people, the children of Israel, redeemed from the hands of Pharaoh and to lead them to the land of Canaan. So Moses was, was given that great commission from that, uh, that burning bush. Now, Moses had got various questions in his mind. He, he asked various questions to the Lord. And one of those questions we read like this. He wanted to know who is the one speaking to him. So let us look to the book of Exodus chapter 3 and verses 13 and 14. 
there we <coughs> read like this and moses said unto god behold when i come unto the children of israel and shall say unto them the god of your fathers hath sent me unto you and they shall say to me what is his name what shall i say unto them and god said unto moses i am that i am and he said thus shall thou say unto the children of israel i am hath sent me unto you here we read about that great revelation of the name of god to moses we have this word jehovah from the uh, from the book of uh, genesis itself but here is the place where god revealed himself and his name to moses god says that i am that i am you go and tell the children of israel the one whose name is i am he has sent me so the word i am is the name of god as revealed over here and let me tell you that the word jehovah that comes from the same root word as i am or other way we can say that the word jehovah means i am or i am that i am so the word i am is the name of jehovah is the name of god that is revealed to moses from that burning bush and also when we come to the book of isaiah chapters 40 to 55 we have several occurrences of the word i am in that play in that uh, uh, scripture portion lot of time we read that name i am there let us look to uh, uh, one verse i say chapter 41 and verse 4 there we uh, read like this who hath wrought and done it calling the generations from the beginning i the lord the first and with the last i am he and the same name i am he or i am is repeated in this section of isaiah we read it in uh, chapter 43 46 48 various uh, chapters uh, it is filled with this term i am which in uh, in greek uh, that word i am is ego emi that word occurs time and again in the book of isaiah and when we study the name of god this name i am is as we saw in the book of exodus in his revelation to moses and also as we <coughs> see in the book of isaiah we can see that all these uh, the, these uh, references can be connected to the word i am which was uttered by our lord himself in and refer and uh, recorded in the gospel according to john as we are all familiar with that uh, gospel of john there is no need for me to go and ask you to read each and every verse where that word i am is there but we know especially the seven great i ams of our lord jesus christ our lord said that i am the light of the world he said that i am the bread of life he said i am the resurrection and life i am the door i am the good shepherd i am the true vine i am the uh, the truth uh, uh, the way uh, truth and life is yes, he is using that word i am time and again time and again in the book of john's gospel we read that and when we compare these two uh, titles which was uttered by our lord <clears throat> and there are various other references where our lord did not use any any predicate but he said that i am 
and one of the most important verse uh, which we can understand from john is uh, we can read in john chapter 8 where our lord as he is uh, speaking to the jewish people uh, we read like this john chapter 8 and verse 24 i said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins for if you believe not that i am he ye shall die in your sins if you believe not that i am he you shall die in your sins see the lord is using that same word which was a third by the prophet isaiah which was revealed to moses by god himself and he is saying that the one who is standing before you is that great i am is the jehovah and the people were not willing to accept that and lord is giving them a warning if you are not ready to believe me as jehovah if you are not willing to believe me as the i am then you will die in your sins recently as i was uh, uh, talking to one person who was not willing to uh, accept this truth <laughs> and i have showed him this verse that how important it is for a person to understand the dit of our lord jesus christ that person wanted to bring before me many of the testimonies and experiences of uh, his life or ministry where he could uh, he could uh, bring some proofs that even without acknowledging jesus as god uh, his uh, life is very good or his ministry is a successful ministry but i brought this verse before him and that he was not willing to say and he uh, i lastly told like this to me uh, you are always trying to say only one thing that jesus is god and we have lot of other things to discuss but why we have to be very clear to bring this doctrine before these people because if they don't believe this doctrine believe this truth that jesus christ is the jehovah of the old testament then they will die in their sins so jesus used the word i am many times as it is recorded in the gospel of john that says that jesus christ is the jehovah of the old testament and in the <laughs> references in isaiah we can see that greatness of this name the eternality of jehovah there we can see his uniqueness there we can see the way he is bringing salvation to his people the way he is mentioned as the creator of the universe and all such things are written over there and when jesus christ is claiming that he is the i am then he is practically saying that he is the creator of the universe he is the eternal one he is the one who is their savior and he is the unique one before him but them so they are not willing to accept this fact and that marked the end uh, of uh, their spiritual life they would be uh, they would be put into the eternal damnation Uh, because they are not willing to accept this truth there are other references also in the book of isaiah which can be compared and we can conclude from those comparisons that christ in the new testament is the same as jehovah we all know that the second section of uh, the book of isaiah begins from chapter 40 and that chapter begins with the ministry of john the baptist we have references to the ministry of john the baptist in that chapter <clears throat> it begins with that word comfort ye and as we come to verse 3 of chapter 40 we have a word like this prepare ye the way of the lord or prepare ye the way of jehovah and that same verse is quoted in 
the Gospels, especially in Matthew and Luke, where we can understand that John the Baptist is referring it to the Lord Jesus Christ. So he is saying that I am preparing the way of the Lord and the, I am preparing the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. He could say that. Then as we meditated last time in uh, Isaiah chapter 6, where we could see about the, uh, the worship in the heavenly places, there we read like this. Is we it? Lost, yeah, we lost Thomas, uh, brother Thomas's connectivity. We'll just give it a minute, a few seconds for him to join back. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, am I audible now? Yes, yes, brother, yes. you are audible now. Oh, Thank you. Praise God. <clears throat> So when we come to Isaiah, uh, the Adonai in the first verse is the Jehovah who is worshipped by the seraphims. And the same person is referred in John chapter 12 and verse 41 as the Lord Jesus Christ. So what a beautiful connection we have. How clearly it is written in the word of God that the Lord Jesus Christ in the, oh, in the New Testament is the same as the Jehovah of the Old Testament. May God enable us to understand and grasp this great truth, which is not a, a, a truth that is innovated by any, yeah, any doctors of theology, but it is very clearly engraved in the Holy Scripture. It is safe for us to understand all these tools. Now, I would like to <coughs> go and uh, mention about uh, some of uh, uh, other names which our Lord uh, has and that refers to his DIT. DIT. The third name uh, that I would like to bring before you is that he is called the Son of God. He is called the Son of God. Before coming to the references uh, to uh, this uh, title, I would like to say a few words uh, uh, as regarding the arguments that are being uh, brought by other people. There are people who can say that, see that word son of God is given to angels and men in the and men in Old Testament. So that is not a proof that Jesus Christ uh, is the son of God that uh, speaks of his deity. It is true that the angels are referred to as the sons of God. And even men are also called like, called like that, both in the New Testament. Also, we can see that truth. But when we come to Christ as the son of God, he is not one of the sons of God, but he is the son of God. He is not one in many, but he is the only one. Angels are a, a, a crowd. A lot of angels are there. And they are, uh, they are collectively called as the sons of God. And concerning believers also, this word is used. But as a collective sense. But when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, he is not a son of God, he is the son of God. And from that we can understand that Jesus Christ is, uh, is not like the angels or not like the saints, but he is the son of God, the one who is in essence the son of God. 
others are called in a moral sense as i uh, mentioned the other time it is in a different sense it is used for men and angels but regarding the lord jesus christ it is about his essence yet this may say like that this the bible uh, god the father is there and god the son is there and father and son uh, this would be two different persons and uh, of two different uh, uh, levels or degrees and how can they both be god who, uh, and equal uh, that is the uh, doubt they can bring because they cannot understand the the way how this truth is engraved in the word of god jehovah witnesses may say like this that he is son of god as a creation of god he is not the creator but he is a creation <coughs> uh, and they say that he is the son of god and he is inferior to god when uh, once a person uh, mentioned this to me then i asked him say jesus christ is mentioned as the son of man so what is that me meaning of that term does that mean that jesus christ is inferior to man and we know that uh, that cannot be true so son of god does not mean that he is inferior to god but that is a clear reference as we can understand from the word of god the he is equal to god and muslims are offended by this title son of god those who have gone and witnessed amongst them they have found that they it is very difficult for them to digest this truth and they may ask uh, if god has a son then who was his wife because they are unable to understand the spiritual truth and they try to grasp this truth in the very physical sense in which uh, they are acquainted so these are the various arguments the people bring over here but when we when we look to the word of god with a pure belief faith we can gather that this truth the word the son of god is clearly a title that describes the deity of the lord jesus christ and we all know that the truth of trinity is not easy for anyone to understand intellectually but it is a truth revealed in the word of god and we are accepting is by faith and the word of god clearly and uh, intelligently brings that truth before us so an unsaved person he can't understand this truth okay let us look to the word of god and see what is <coughs> what is the meaning of this word son of god turn to john chapter 5 and verse 18 how is this word being understood by the people who live during the time of lord jesus christ by the jews uh, during his time let us see john chapter 5 and verse 18 therefore the jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the sabbath but said also that god was his father making himself equal with god see when the jews listened to the lord jesus christ and when they heard that jesus christ is uh, is uh, calling himself as the son of god or he is calling god as his father in a very special way they understood that jesus christ is making himself equal to god so that word son of god the the meaning of that word is that he is equal to god the father now that is why when our christ was facing the trial before the high priest they asked him a question are you the son of the blessed are you christ the son of the blessed we read that question in mark chapter 14 verse 61 and 62 and also we can compare that same question in luke chapter 22 and verse 70 i am not going to read those verses but from these two references we can see the trial uh, which uh, the lord had and the questions they asked 
they are asking him are you the son of god are you the son of the blessed one so they are asking him if you say that you are christ you are saying that you are the son of god and if you are saying that you are the son of god then you are making yourself equal to god the father and when jo when jo lord jesus christ answered in affirmative we can see that the high priest torn his clothes he tore his clothes because he could not withstand this truth and when apostle peter confessed before the lord in matthew chapter 16 and verse 16 he said that the word christ the son of the living god what a great truth it is that the disciples the unlearned disciples could guess could grasp it but the learned high priest could not understand or believe or accept this truth and when we <coughs> when we <coughs> say that jesus christ is the son of god let me tell you that we have to understand uh, uh, one thing that not only that others referred to him as the son of god jesus christ himself uh, uh, acknowledged uh, this truth that is what we read in john chapter 10 and verse 36 there we read like this uh, say ye of him whom the father hath sanctified and sent into the world thou blasphemest because i said i am the son of god so lord jesus christ is acknowledging that uh, here that he is the son of god in a very plain term and as we have just gathered from the way the scriptures that he is saying that he is equal to god or he is god himself now as we use this word the two uh, other words which are very similar to uh, or very connected with this truth we have to keep in our mind and just mentioning those two words i would uh, i would conclude my uh, my uh, session now and one of those words is the only begotten son <coughs> jesus christ is the son of god and he is the only begotten son when we come to john chapter 1 and verse 18 there we read that no one has seen the seen god at any time the only begotten son who is in his bosom has revealed him so jesus christ is mentioned as the only begotten son there again in john chapter 3 and verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that word only begotten son comes over there so what is the meaning of that word that word means that he is a unique one he is not the son of god as the angels are he is not the son of god as the saints are but he is a unique one that word only begotten that means that he is the only one of its kind there is no duplicate there is no one else like him he is the only one of its kind and the first occurrence of this word only begotten comes in genesis chapter 22 and verse 1 where our lord is asking abraham to sacrifice his only begotten son isaac and we know that by the time uh, uh, isaac was born abraham already had another son and that was through hagar and that was isaac ishmael so ishmael and isaac were there before abraham but god is saying that isaac is your only begotten son he is the only one of its kind there is no one who is equal to him so when john lord jesus christ is uh, described as the only begotten son of god that means that he is the only one of its kind he is unique he is not like the angels he is not like any of the saints but he is the only one of its kind uh, may god help us to understand this great truth again another <coughs> term which also we have to understand in connection with this that is mentioned in the book of colossians chapter 1 and verse 15 and that is he is called as the firstborn 
the word firstborn is connected to the Lord Jesus Christ in various ways. He's uh, said as the firstborn of the creation, and he's the firstborn from among the dead. So he is called as the firstborn. And what is the meaning of that word firstborn in the scripture? The firstborn means that he is the preeminent one. Here, the uh, that word speaks not that he is the former in time. But it is mentioned over there that he is prior, he has the priority in the rank. It speaks of his preeminence. He is the firstborn of every creature. That, that, that does not mean that he was created before other creation. But that means that he is the preeminent one. That God help us to understand that our Lord Jesus Christ is none other than the true God. He is called God. He is called Jehovah. And he is called the Son of God. May God bless us that to know the greatness and the uh, great glory of our Lord. And live for him and to worship him in the days to come. Let us truly acknowledge that God has given him the name. That is above every other name. So let us worship him and live for him. May these thoughts which we have gathered in connection with the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ would encourage us to live for him and for his glory to, uh, uh, to him be all glory be. Thank you.